Hey everybody, welcome back to another iPreview. Mark your calendars because we have a ton of exciting announcements this week. Next Sunday, July 18th is our All Nation Sunday. We will be having an international food tasting happening after the 11 a.m. service. If you would like to represent a country, please see Emily Beatty for further information. A week from Monday, July 19th at 7 p.m. is our July's Infinite Team Night. This night will be dedicated to anyone who's willing to help Infinite's iKids VBS. If you have any further questions, please see Heather and Spencer Cox. Sunday, July 25th, we will be having Charity Gale for both 9 a.m. and 11 a.m. services. We encourage you to invite someone to join you on this special day of worship. Attention Infinite students, July 30th at 6 p.m. is the NAYC Youth Rally in Lancaster. There will be food trucks after the service, so be prepared with some cash. If you have any further questions, see Michael Condon for further information. Taste and See is coming back. Carol Condon will be posting additional information soon. That's all for this week, everybody. Make sure to follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter for any upcoming events here at Infinite. And I was buried beneath my shame And who could carry that kind of weight It was my tomb Till I met you
145 years ago, uh, we signed this famous document called the Declaration of Independence. Now, I don't know how much history you remember, but just because we signed a document did not mean that we were free. Uh, that, that was just the beginning, and they, they made this declaration because there were some men that truly believed uh, that there could be a different way of living, and they truly believed that we could be free. But just because you declare something doesn't mean it's so. The declaration in itself, that document, did not set us free. Uh, it just declared our intent as a country. And uh, sometimes uh, when you declare ahead of time, uh, you have to sort of prophesy your future. And, and that's really what the Declaration of Independence was, is they were declaring, this is where we're going. This is what we're doing. We truly believe that we can be a free country. And so, and then you also need to know that when you declare something, that there's going to be a fight that has to happen in order for it to become accomplished. And so it wasn't just, when they made that declaration, it wasn't something that happened quickly. In fact, it happened over years and years of time. And July 4th, 1776, the declaration was signed. But it was in, uh, for probably six, seven, eight years that, that the war, the Revolutionary War, began. And you didn't know you are signing up for a little history lesson today, did you? And uh, so, but the battle, you know, the battle was to be free from England, to be free from Britain, and, 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 and the British were determined that they were going to keep the colonies under their thumb, and they wanted the money, they wanted the wealth that, that they were discovering from uh, the colonies, and, and so the battle begun, and when they declared that, the battle begun, and they started with Boston, and, and they would send armies from England over to Boston and then down into New York Harbor they would send ships and then into the Norfolk and, and Chesapeake Bay area they would send ships and then all the way down to Charleston, South Carolina England would send ships. They were determined that they were going to keep America pressed, oppressed. And, but what they underestimated was the resolve and what they underestimated was the passion in the understanding of the vision that these men, these common people had in, in the colonies. And so at, at one particular time, England literally sent, sent hundreds of ships uh, over to uh, the United States. Of course, it was the colonies then, but uh, they, they sent hundreds of ships with thousands of men, with artillery that... Our people didn't have, and I mean, in the, when they arrived into the New York uh, area, they literally took these cannonballs, and, and uh, it's hard to imagine, but uh, New York City was only about 20,000 people at that time, and, and they would take these cannonballs from the ships and just fire them into, into the New York uh, City area, demolishing their homes and their families, and, and these soldiers would get off by the thousands from these hundreds of ships, and and they would attack New York and, and, uh, and they would attack the people and take in many, many people. But what they didn't understand is even though England was much better trained in warfare, even though England was, had much better artillery, what they didn't understand is the people, the common people in the colonies had a vision. They had a vision that they were no longer going to be under the thumb of King George and the oppression. They had a vision that they could truly be equal. They had this vision that no man is better than another. They had this vision that anybody can rise from any area of their life and become something and become somebody. You see, vision is powerful. Vision can absolutely drive people to do things they thought they could never do. And so the people of the colonies decided we're going to win this battle because we have a vision of freedom. It's not just our freedom that we're fighting for, but it's the vision that we're fighting for our children and our children's children. They didn't know you and I. They had no clue that they were fighting for us. They just knew we're setting up a new system that everybody can live for God the way they want. Everybody 
can become anything they want. Anybody can become everything they want in this country because everybody is created equal. And they even said everybody has inalienable rights given by God himself. And they were fighting for you and I. That's why we have this tradition of this weekend. That's why we have this celebration. Throughout the course of the war, an estimated 6,800 Americans were killed in action. 6,100 were wounded. And upwards of 20,000 were taken prisoner. They said at one time when they attacked New York City area that they would take thousands of, of prisoners and put them on these ships and just lock them up and just let them sit there and literally starve to death and rot to death in these ships. In fact, it said historians believe that at least additional 17,000 deaths were the result of disease, including the eight to 12,000 who died at prisoners of wars in the bottoms of these ships. It is said that as many as 25,000 British were killed in this war. Again, the desire uh, and vision for freedom is powerful. Freedom from the British, freedom from poverty, freedom from the bondage of King George, that's what they were fighting for. They wanted, they wanted this country to be free. In this country, it's pretty amazing. Yes, we have all kinds of mistakes and all kinds of things that we can fix and all kinds of things that need to be fixed been throughout all of our history, but it's really been built that anybody can come here and become anything. It doesn't matter what your financial status is, what family you were brought in under. It doesn't matter. You can become anything in, in this country. In fact, we have watched, uh, it doesn't matter where your social status is, it doesn't matter what ethnicity you are, it doesn't matter any of those things, uh, uh, you can rise and become anything because of the fight that went on in the Revolutionary War. Again, I'm not saying that everything through our history is pristine, because it's not. There are a lot of unrighteous and ungodly things, uh, because that's humanity. But we also know that if you're a black gentleman in this, in, this, uh, in this country, you can rise from nothing and become the president of the United States. We also know if, you're, uh, if you have Asian descent and black descent, you can rise as a woman and become the vice president of this country. We also know that you can rise and become a doctor. You can rise and become a teacher. You can rise and become a nurse. You can do anything in this country because of what was established in the beginning in the Revolutionary War. With that being said, I want to talk to you about another vision that's even more powerful than the vision of what was fought for in, in the Revolutionary War, and that's the freedom from sin. The freedom from chaos in our lives. The freedom from sickness and disease and religion and fear and anxiety and strongholds in your life. You see, when you come to Jesus Christ, there is one who is stronger and more powerful than anyone else that can truly set us free. Over and over again, we've witnessed people walk through these doors and come from a life that you would think is impossible to overcome. But see, that's the power of freedom in Jesus Christ. It doesn't matter where you come from. It doesn't matter what your ethnicity is. It doesn't matter what your career is. It doesn't matter how much you have in the bank or don't have in the bank. When you walk into Jesus Christ, everything can change and you can be free. It doesn't have to stay the way that it is when you walk through these doors. We have people who have been bound by sickness and mental fears and emotional stress, and, and, and they realize when they meet Jesus, it doesn't have to stay the same because Jesus is a game changer in every one of our lives. Today, you can once and for all be free. Amen, somebody. John chapter 14, verse 6 says, Jesus said to him, I am the way. I am the truth and the life. Now, I don't know about you, but I don't like not knowing where I'm going. I, that's a pet peeve of mine is to make you turns and turn around. That just doesn't go well with me because I always feel like I just wasted a few minutes of my life if I have to make a U-turn, you know. I like to know the way. Can I tell you today that Jesus is the way? 
There's a lot of things that are really confusing in our country today. There's a lot of things you just don't know. Who's telling you the truth? But Jesus is the way. He will never fail you. He'll never leave you. He'll never forsake you. Jesus is the way. Can I tell you in a country that I love this country, but you just don't know what's true anymore. You know, I mean, you just, yeah, other than that, we know that's true, that we don't know what's true. You know, we, we, you, you listen to one, you know, station and you think, where do they get this from? And you listen to the other television station and you're like, that is totally opposite from what they're saying on the other television station. What in God's green earth is the truth? And, but Jesus says, I'm the way, and I am the truth. We may not understand and comprehend everything else that goes on in this world, but one thing we do know is Jesus is the truth. And the other thing we know is that he is life, and he's life more abundantly. He's the life that we can know without a shadow of a doubt. It's true. It's going to be okay. And he said, no one comes to the Father except through me. You see, once again, it doesn't matter what your background is. It doesn't matter who your family is. It doesn't matter what your finances are. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. You won't get there by what you do. You won't get there by who you are. You're not going to get to heaven by if your parents live for God really, really well. You're going to get there because you chose to be a follower of Jesus Christ. You won't get there by what your religious background is or was. You're going to get there because you're a follower of Jesus Christ. You're not going to get there by what denomination you associate with. You're going to get there because you're a follower of Jesus Christ. Because everything else is run by humans, and humans make mistakes all the time. But when you follow Jesus, he's the way, the truth, the life, and you're going to find victory there in your life. Only Jesus Christ can set you free. Only Jesus Christ. Jesus is freedom. Let me say that again. Jesus is freedom. If you really want to be free, it's wonderful. I love this country. But if you really want to be free, then Jesus Christ is the only way, the truth, and the life. I grew up in church. I went to church camps. I mean, I, I've been around this all my entire life. I, we had great student ministries, and I'm proud of our students that are going on this retreat this weekend. It's going to be an amazing time, and, and we're just believing that God's going to do some incredible things in their lives. But that's not what set me free. Their paths, their tools, they're wonderful, but it's still my choice and my decision to walk with Jesus and follow Jesus that makes me free. I had to make a choice. As a teenager, I had to make a choice. How was I going to live? Was I going to follow religion? Was I going to follow friends? Or was I going to follow Jesus Christ and him crucified? And I determined, I am going to give everything I have to living for Jesus. I wanted to please the Lord. I wavered back and forth through my teen years. And, you know, times I thought, man, am I going to do this? Can I do this? I don't know if I have what it takes to do this. But I finally got to a point that I realized I am going to do this. And if I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it with everything I have. I've said it before, living for Jesus 100% is easy. But living for Jesus at 99% will be the most difficult thing you'll ever do. You must say, I'm all in. I am going to be a freedom fighter. I'm not just fighting for me, but I'm fighting for my children, my family, my children, their children. Something happened to me when I made a 100% commitment. Something changed in me when I made a 100% commitment. It was like, I'm not playing around with this. This is my life. This is who I am, it's what I do, and it's how I'm going to live. There was a crazy passion. There was a raging fire that burned in me and still burns in me. And I'll do whatever, whenever, wherever I have to, to follow Jesus and help other people find that freedom. 
You see, when they fought in that Revolutionary War, I would imagine they were out there in those fields and in those woods and in those trees. You see, they found a whole different kind of warfare because they knew they were going to win. The people in the colonies, they're like, now we're not going to stand there. You know, up to that point, you all stood in a line. We'll stay here. The enemy stands here. We'll all just rush each other and kill each other. No, the colony people said, nah, we're not doing that. We're going to hide in trees, and we're going to hide behind bunkers, and we're going to just pick you off one time. You're not coming into my property, into my land, into my life, and taking what we believe is ours. It's our inalienable rights from God. Can I tell you today, I'm not going to let anybody come into my family, into my life, into my church, and take what I believe is rightfully mine. Because he was given to me by my God. And I'm going to walk with him. I'm going to talk with him. He's going to be my every breath I breathe. It may be a different strategy. It may be a different way. We may, we may fight different, and, and it may change over the course of years and the course of culture. I mean, we live in a world today that we don't really understand the sacrifice that was made in that Revolutionary War. And now that we're hundreds of years removed from it, it's not as big of a deal. And so it doesn't matter to us, and some of the traditions don't matter to us, because we didn't pay the price. It's just easy for us to receive. But see, and it happens in the church also, that if we're not careful, if we don't pass this tradition down, then one day we're going to wake up and realize, uh, you know, hey, we didn't pay the price for this. This is easy. There'll be other people that come when I'm dead and gone. They'll walk into this building. They don't know our story. It doesn't mean the same to them. They, they didn't sacrifice. They weren't, on the, they weren't the ones on the parking lot in the heat last summer when we were worshiping God. But see, to us, it means something because most of us, we gave sacrificially to get into this building. We gave sacrificially to watch this church rise from nothing to what God is doing. And so we fight. We fight for it. We show up and we pray for it. We serve in the parking lots. We serve in the hallways. We show up in floats and we spend hours till, till midnight making floats and stuffing little paper mache pearls and all those kind of things. Why do we do that? Because we're fighting for freedom. It's a little different. The strategy is a little different. The songs, they change. The music changes. But the message of this gospel never changes. I had a little crew this morning for a few minutes, and I was walking out there. There was nobody in the parking lot, just crew and I. And I said, crew, I don't know what your future is. And I'm talking, I don't think he's understanding the thing I'm saying. But I said, crew, I don't know you, if you know this, but God has his hand on you. And I said, crew, who knows, you're going to be here when the next building is built. You'll be a teenager when the next facility is built. You may be the worshiper. You may be working with students. Who knows? You may even be the pastor of this church one day. We don't know what the future is, but I'm fighting for you. I'm fighting for you. Because there's going to come a day when all hell comes against your little life. He's two years old. He's probably thinking, I have no idea what my poppy's saying. And so a car pulled on the parking lot. I said, crew, this is where we wave. This is where we wave. And I was trying to get him to wave. He wasn't paying attention. He wouldn't wave. But I said, crew, this is where we wave. This is how we tell people, we're excited you're coming here today. This is what we do. We're fighting, crew. We're fighting. There's something to be worth that's worth fighting for. What am I doing? I'm pounding in his little brain. This is what we live for, crew. This is who we are. This is what we do. We worship. We worship. And we set the atmosphere free so people can come in here and find freedom. We don't want one soul to go to hell under our watch. I don't want, I, I don't want one soul to not make heaven. This isn't just, I'm not just fighting for me. I'm not even just fighting for my kids and grandkids. I want your kids to be free. I do it, my, two of my children are gone. I do it because you may have children, you may have friends, you may have neighbors that walk through these doors. I have a reason to fight. We could, we could just water down this church. We could water down the gospel. We could just say grace, 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 grace. But somewhere there's got to be a truth. 
Somewhere there's got to be a truth. And we're going to stand on what we know is the way and the truth and the light. There may be other churches, they may, there may be other Christians, there may be other believers that do some things and you say, well, why don't we get to do that? Why can't we go here? Why can't we do that? Why can't we live this way? I don't care what they're doing. I'm not fighting their fight. I'm fighting this church's fight. Why do we serve? We're fighting. Why do we build a float and march at 10 miles an hour? Because we're fighting. Some of you were spitting blood by the time we were done yesterday. It was crazy. Why do we come early and greet people? Because we're fighting. Why do we get out on the parking lot and smile and, and let everyone know we're glad they're here? Because we're fighting. There's something in here that changed me, and I want it to be able to change every person that comes on this parking lot. Why do we open these altars every Sunday? A lot of churches have done away with altars. We could, in, we could save about 15 minutes in church, and we could get to lunch quicker if we just do away with the altars. No, no, I'm going to fight. I believe it's worth fighting for. I know what it did for me, and we're going to continue doing it. Why do we fight for some doctrinal stands that we, we believe that are true and necessary and faithful? Because it's in this word, and I'm going to fight for it. I'm going to fight for it. And I'm praying to God that God will send us an army of people. We've got people that's been walking with God for years in this room right now. Why are you here? Because you know what God did for you, and you're going to just keep fighting. Do you realize, some of you, I think all of you maybe, there may be a few that don't truly understand, but when the New Beginnings Church merged with this church, they handed us a check for $1,470,000 that paid off this building. And we talk about how we're debt free and all that, and that's great and wonderful. But I remember telling Randy, Randy's father and mother passed away now, but they attended that church years ago. And, and some of the others that may be in here that have, you know, you know people that have gone on, they gave to that church that was on Main Street. Never did they realize when they were giving that they would be fighting for you, everybody in this room. They may have thought, oh, it was wasted. Oh, where's the church now? But you see, this church gets to reap the fight of the church that was on Main Street that allows us to be debt-free, that allows us to serve and do what we're doing. The fight was not in vain. Doug and Tina, the 14 years you went through, it may have think, why did we do all that? Was it worth it? Can I tell you, it was worth every struggle, every test, every trial, every disappointment, every hurt, every rejection. The fight was worth it. The fight was worth it. All of you that came from that church that you gave through the years, can I tell you, the fight was worth it. I, 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 there's so much I want to tell you right now, and I can't because I'm trying to be disciplined and keep myself intact right now. But shortly, you're going to see where the fight goes. We've got to say, Lord, keep me focused. Don't let me get weary. Don't let me get tired. Yesterday, I put on Facebook, I ran a 5K. Yeah. Aren't you proud? <laughs> so I'm all pumped. I've been working on this. And I'm all pumped to run this 5K. My worship buddy friend, he says, I'll run with you. He said, I'll stay right with you, push with you. He lied. He left me in the first five seconds. <laughs> and everybody, there's a big, huge crowd. And I'm like, just, man, I thought, I'm going to crush this because I like to win. And there's about 800 people. And there's like everybody around me. I think, my God, I'm going to trip over somebody and fall flat on my face right here in the middle of New Albany. 
So they shoot the gun and take off and everybody's running at a really nice pace. And I'm thinking, man, this is fun. And I, and I felt normal and I felt everything was fine. And, and my little headphones went off and said, you've run the first mile in nine minutes and 24 seconds. I'm thinking, I've never run that fast in my life, I don't think. At least, at least my adult life. And, and so I'm thinking, man, I'm going to crush this. And I was hoping that, you know, I'd had a certain time in my mind. And, and, and so I'm running about a quarter of a mile after that mile. Man, something hit me. I felt like someone clapped on 10 pounds on each foot. And something crawled in my lungs. And I didn't know the course. And can I tell you, when you run this Christian race, there are detours. There are things you don't know that's coming up. And I'm just about the time I'm starting to lose wind and they clamped on these 10 pounds. They got this little four-piece orchestra sitting in the middle of this neighborhood just playing really nice music. I'm thinking, are you kidding me? That's the last thing I care about right now. <laughs> and so I'm running and I just start to slow down a little bit. I'm thinking, my God, I'm going to die of a heart attack right here in the middle of this thing. And so I started finding reasons why I should quit. I started thinking, They'll understand you're old. You'll understand, you know, and, and I, I started talking to myself thinking, I need, maybe I just need to slow down. Maybe I need to be responsible. I don't know what's going to happen here. And about that time, I see this girl come running right past me. I'm not chauvinistic. My wife thinks I am sometimes, but I'm thinking, no, I'm going to keep going. And so I keep going, and I mean, I'm just struggling and all of a sudden, this little old guy, I think he's about seven years old, he looked like he had little sewing machine legs. They were like, ee, 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 and he just passed me right up. And everything in me wanted to run faster, and I could not run faster. Sometimes we start this race, and we start out like jackrabbits. Yeah, I'm going to do everything for God. And then all of a sudden, you get hit, and it seems like someone's clamped on 10-pound weights on your life. And everything gets really tough, and everything gets difficult. And you start thinking, ah, I don't know if I can run this race. It's a little difficult. It's a little challenging. I'm sucking wind. I don't know if I can make it. And you, you find all the reasons why you need to drop out of the race. Can I tell you, don't you dare quit. Don't you dare quit. I started to watch people that ran way ahead of me. They experienced the same thing I experienced because they started walking. I mean, they started walking. I'm like, nah, we ain't walking. We're going to keep running. We're going to keep running. I may, it, I may be going the same pace if, as if I was walking, but I'm going to keep running. I saw a dad, and he was running with his girl, his young girl. I say she's probably around 12, 13. And she was, she said, Dad, I got to stop, I got to stop, I got to stop. And he put his hand behind her. And he said, no, honey, we can keep going. Let's keep going. Let's keep going. There are going to be people in your race that when you begin to walk with God, they will say, hey, don't give up. Come on, we're going to get to the finish line. We're going to make it all the way. Come on, honey, you can make it. You can make it. Let's, yeah. And then I watched them come to a walk, and they begin to walk, and, 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 and they walked for a little bit, and they got back up. He said, now we're going to keep going. We're going to get back up. We're going to keep going. I watched one, one person that, was, uh, that started the race, and, 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 and they were mentally disabled, and they were still running this race. Not all the times you understand every race that you're running. Not all the time you get everything that's going on. But yet, you got to keep running. you got to get the race. you got to keep going. I remember when I crossed the finish line, my buddy who left me obviously was at the finish line. He's the one that shot the little video of me. And as I was coming around the corner, as I was coming around the corner, you could hear all these people say, come on, come on. I think they were saying it to everybody, but I took it personally. And they were saying, come on, come on, you can make it, you can make it. And I was just dreaded trying to get to the finish line. It never looked so good to me. I saw that little uh, little line where they had him. I'm like, my God, I just got to get to that line. Can I tell you, can I tell you, there's a line coming. 
There's a line, there's a finish line that's coming. And if we'll keep running this race, if you'll keep fighting this fight, it's going to get weary. There's going to get times that you, there's going to be times that you wonder, can I make it? Can I make it? But you know what's great? There's going to be people that's run before you, some of your relatives, some of your friends. They're already at the finish line, and they're going to have their phone. Uh, I need my phone there. Is this mine? And they're going to be at the finish line of heaven, and they're going to be saying, come on, come on. You can make it, Emily. You can make it. You just come on. Get over here. Get over here. There's going to be people. Avery, they say, come on, Avery. Come on. You can make it just a little farther. Just a little farther. Come on. You've got loved ones that are already over the finish line, and they've already made it, and they're rooting you on. Come on, we got to keep fighting. We can't slack up. We can't let go. We can't water down. Come on, just get you, get you some stamina and say, let's go. Let's fight this fight. I had a regret. I needed the Rocky theme song in my iPad for the last mile. I thought, man, I need that song. John 8, 36 says, therefore, if the Son makes you free, you shall be free indeed. Every price, every time you stayed up late to pick up a young person, every time you went to a rehearsal, every time you showed up and served, Every time, whether it's hot or cold, you welcome people onto the parking lot. Every time you've done anything for Jesus Christ, you are moving yourself forward in your race with God. Yes, there's hurts. Yes, there's disappointments. Yes, there's all kinds of reasons why you feel like you could quit the race. Can I encourage you today? Don't quit the race. Keep fighting for freedom, for you, for your children. He said, I don't know if they'll ever make it. They may not even make it while you're alive. But you keep fighting because I believe that God is a keeper of promises. And maybe even after you're gone, they'll walk into this church or a church somewhere and they'll say, you know what? My mom lived this life. My dad lived this life. And I want this life. I want to make it. Only Jesus Christ. Only Jesus Christ can set you free. We're going into this Olympic season. I've been watching just a little bit of some of these people trying to qualify. And and can I tell you the champions are not made at the Olympics? They're not made at the Olympics. That's just where they're recognized. That's just where they're recognized. Champions are made at what they do every morning of their life. When we get to heaven and we receive our our heavenly rewards, that's just where we'll be recognized. But our race is being run every day of our lives. And I want to encourage you on this July 4th weekend, say, God, I'm a freedom fighter. I'm going to keep fighting. Sometimes I lose hope. Sometimes I think, you know, is it going to be worth it? Are my kids going to make it? Is my family going to make it? Am I going to make it? You keep running and you keep fighting and don't you ever give up. Don't stop praying. Don't stop coming to, uh, to uh, corporate prayer meetings and all those times that we're just moving to be stronger in the presence of God. There is a real heaven and there is a real hell. And I think one of the worst things that will be when you make heaven is to know that I could have helped fight for somebody else. Maybe I didn't invite them. Maybe I didn't help them. They didn't finish the race. And But one of the worst things I think will be in hell is every day you know I could have made it a little further. I could have made it. I watched that video that David shot at me yesterday. I thought, man, all these kids are racing past me at the finish line. I'm thinking, why didn't I at least finish strong? You know, why didn't I like at least find some energy? Because I felt like after I watched the video, I could have run faster at the, the last five seconds of it, you know? So at least when I got on video, I, I looked like I was about to throw up when I got to the end. <laughs> Just get to the end. 
just cross the line. Just say, God, I'm going to make it. I'm going to make it. Second Timothy chapter 4, verse 7 says, I have fought the good fight, and I have finished the race. And when it's all said and done, I want to say it, I have kept the faith. I have kept the faith. I didn't water it down. I didn't make it become just mamby-pamby Christianity kind of stuff. But God, I focused and I stayed true to you. And I stayed faithful to who I am. Lord, I want to please you. Can we stay in this morning? I'm fighting. Because Carol and I want to be at the finish line. And we want to hear you say, or we want to hear you cross that line or see you cross that line. And we want you to know you're going to make it. You're going to make it. Keep fighting. We're fighting for something that's real. We're fighting for freedom. We're wanting to pass this church down to the next generation that's strong and not diluted from what we know. Because see, we know we've been in powerful altar settings and we've been in powerful meetings where we've watched God do some extraordinary things. I don't want this to ever get to a place that is just a little inspiration meeting and we do our three or four little songs and a little foo-foo worship Jesus and, and we leave here and say, I made it, I clocked in, I clocked out, I got there. No. It's bigger than that to me. It means more to that to me. I want my children and children's children, your children. And, and why do you think that we invest in all of these VBS meetings? You think they're bored and don't have anything to do? No, we invest in them. Because we're praying to God that there will be many children that come to that VBS this summer and they'll see them around these altars with tears running down their eyes and they're giving their life to Jesus. That's why we're doing it. Why do you think we walked so fast and handed out cards yesterday? Because we're fighting for something that's bigger than us. I'm thankful for every person as I was studying this week. I just wanted to say thank you to these people I've never met. That their lives and their blood was spilled out in some field. That some never even found them. That mothers never got to see their kids again. Because they were out fighting. Maybe some of them didn't even know what they were fighting for. They just knew that they were supposed to go out and fight. This gospel is worth fighting for. I know there's hurts in church and there's rejection and, and there's troubling times and confusing times and I get all that. But it's not going to ever, ever, ever cause me to stop fighting for truth. One of the ways you recognize the armies were by their uniforms and they'd always say hey they're the red coats they call them the British the British they had a uniform and the enemy has a uniform and the church has a uniform we talk different we walk different we act different we are different we are different I'm not trying to be like the enemy. I'm not trying to look like the enemy. I'm fighting. I'm fighting. Because I want the church to be the church. You know, I imagine when some of those men after the war was run, one after the, roar, after the war was won. They got back to their families. They got back to their homes. They were proud of who they were. My father-in-law was in World War II. He was proud of what he was, who he belonged to. And he would go to the parade 
And when the flags start to come down, he's not just stood. He not just put his hand over his heart, but he wept. He wept. You know why? Because he saw his he saw his friends go down and never come home. He saw those that he loved dearly lay down their lights and never came home. He himself got his knees shot off and laid in bed for nine months and said he would never walk again. You see, when you pay the price, it's a different story. It's a different story. And this is our declaration of freedom. When you go to the book of Acts, it'll tell you what you need to do to be free. If you've got to fight the fight. You've got to step out. You're going to suffer some casualties along the way. But you get back up. And you say, I'm going to fight this fight. No matter what. No matter what. I want to open this altar right now. And I want us to just take a moment, everyone in this building, to say, God, I want to fight. I don't want to lose focus. Like I said yesterday, I, I could think of a gazillion reasons. I thought at one time, everybody was going that way. I thought, if I turn this way, <laughs> start running down the other road, they'll never know. But all I could see, even though I couldn't see it in front of me, all I could see, Mark, get to the finish line. Get to the finish line. Yes, there's been times you've been hurt, broken, disappointed, things that's happened. But can I tell you today, I want to open this altar right now. And I want you to say, I'm getting to the finish line. I'm going to the end. Because I'm, I want to be at the end and say, Emily, come on, you can make it. Come on, come on, Dustin, come on, make it. I see you coming. I see you coming. You just got a few more feet, Dustin. Get to the end, Dustin. Get to the end. Because you're going to want to sit there and see your children's children one day cross that finish line. You're sitting here for a reason. You show up for a reason because there is a finish line. Say, God, I want you. I want to get to the finish line. Yes, there's been all kinds of things. Man, every once in a while it gets uphill. Every once in a while yesterday they had one little stretch. And I thought, my God, is it ever going to go back downhill again? Yes, there's times that it starts, it just seems like it's always uphill. But if you'll keep running, if you'll keep going, you'll get to the finish line. Come on, church. Let's cry out to God right now. Say, Lord, I want to make it. I want to make it to the finish line. I want to fight for freedom today. What a great day to find freedom in your walk with God. July 4th, 2021. Yeah, come on, sing, worship team. Come on, church. Lift up those hands. Fight for freedom. That's how we fight. That's our weapon. Praise is our weapon. That's how we overcome through our worship.